Hi, I'm Laura Flanders coming to you from Common Bound 2016. We're in Buffalo, New York. And I'm sitting here with a very special guest on this first Saturday of the conference. It's the first Saturday after a pretty rough week in the United States, a week that saw the killing of two more African Americans at the hands of the police, and then in Dallas, a shooting that ended up killing five police officers and wounding more. A lot of people came to the conference pretty kind of, if not rattled and grieving, then at least distracted. And our guest was one of them. Tawana Petty comes to us from Detroit, where she's a, a mom, an organizer, and an artist. She worked closely with Grace Lee Boggs at the Boggs Center. Um, Tawana, welcome to the program. Glad to have you. Thank you, Laura. Talk a little bit about that. I mean, you just told me a little bit about your family. You have a lot of police officers in your family. Yeah. How did you come up and how do you grapple with a moment like this? Well, uh, it's challenging. There are a lot of contradictions with having a lot of law enforcement in your family. And uh, there's a lot of contradictions with struggling against police brutality and trying to have those conversations as well because at the end of the day, everyone wants someone to make it home safely. Yeah. And so um, it's one of those things that um, having the, I, I think it's kind of like as Grace would say, the opportunity in crisis um, is having relationships with officers that I firmly believe really want to do what's right. And so um, it's an opportunity to transform the conversation that's happening globally uh, with police officers in the community. So how does Common Bound fit into any of that? I mean, a lot of people might say, this is no time to be going to a conference about new economic models and economic transformation. That's for some other time. Right now, we're dealing with life and death. Yeah, well, you know what? Um, history is very important, and uh, knowledge of history even more important. And recognizing that the police department itself was founded on economics, and a lot of officers um, uh, take on these positions that are really based on protecting property. And so when you think about the economics of fear and militarization and the police department and how it all ties in and having uh, young black men murdered for things like trying to make a living, um, I can't think of a better place to be right now. You know, we're visioning what the alternative can be. And so that's why I'm here. So I'm hearing kind of that our police are policing our current economy. Yeah, absolutely. How do you see that in Detroit? Well, in Detroit, um, for example, a lot of it's been privatized. We have conglomerates called Detroit One that are like a coalition of like ATF and Detroit Police and Wayne County Prosecutors and so and so the ATF, on. The ATF, the anti-terror task force. Exactly. And so um, a lot of that is really uh, filtered into a particular area that's being invested in. So you look at like the downtown, midtown area and you see all these coalitions coming together to make sure that particular areas in Detroit remain a certain way and safe for certain people. And so um, it's heavily militarized. And you don't see that same investment in law enforcement or even community mm -hmm. in other parts of the neighborhood. So you know that there's an economic relationship that's happening there. And in those other parts of the community, are you developing alternatives to the police? Or is 911 still the call people make when they're in trouble? Yeah, we're working on alternatives like peace zones for life and trying to think about what a liberated territory could be um, and communities that can, you know, pull out of investing in police as a first line of defense. But it's going to take a lot of work, you know, for as much as we understand that that's not the solution, the community building aspect has to come first. And so um, doing a lot of conversations around cooperative economics, around social solidarity economy, around what, what are the assets on your particular street in your neighborhood that would help you circulate your money amongst one another and then become more neighborly so that you don't have to call the police. You you know, so if everybody knows that, you know, John down the street or 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 or, or Sarah or whomever um, is doing something wrong, then you have accountability to the mm -hmm. community. And so having those discussions and and also showing up in practice how you can do that. It's fascinating. I'm, I'm thinking a lot about how our economy, our capitalist economy really does put 
dog against dog, yeah. dog eat dog economy is aptly named, it has a policing component. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about here at Common Bound is not just new economic models, but new personal relationships, I think. Absolutely. Yeah. And also in Common Bound, a discussion is happening that's not happening in most places. Capitalism and racism are inextricably linked. And a lot of people don't make that connection. And because they don't make that connection, they're not visioning an alternative. You know, there's this quote that, um, and I can't remember who the author is, but it says, it's become easier to imagine the end of the world than it has to be to imagine the end of capitalism. And so we can vision our death before we can vision a new society and a new economy. That's dangerous. You know, and I think to be in a space with hundreds of people who are thinking about that is very important, particularly at this time. So talk to people who maybe still have an impression of this um, new economy world, this inclusive economy, whatever word we want to call it, uh, as a fairly white space. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Was it ever true? Is it true today? Well, historically, it's not true. It may look that way now. And it's because in particular, I'll use the black community, for example, there is a sort of historical trauma that comes along with growing your own food and those types of things. They have a connection to slavery. And so, and that was, and I think that was strategic, you know, to pull us away from our historical skill sets and different things that we were doing before we were slaves. And so it's, it's about reintroducing those modes of production and community resilience that don't have that trauma. And so, yes, um, the language itself uh, makes it maybe more white than black, but I think that it's important that we all come together and recognize that we all need to be invested in this or we won't have a world to imagine an economy in. And so, um, so I think um, it's, gr it's shifting in this transition. You have people like Jessica Gordon Nimhard who have done the important work of digging up that history and making it accessible to the black community so that we know what our roles and responsibilities are in shifting a new economy. I have to just do a plug for the Laura Flanders show where I think Jessica got to put out one of her first um, interviews before publication of her really important book, Collective Courage. Yeah. Um, we also did a special recently on Soul Fire Farm nice. in upstate New York, which is addressing some of that trauma around farming that you mentioned. So that's a little plug for the Laura Flanders show at <laughs> lauraflanders.com. Um, Grace Lee Boggs, yeah. it's been a year since her passing. I'm sure you think every day, you know, what would Grace be saying? So what would Grace be saying about this, about this moment? And, and what did she teach you about that nexus between capitalism and race in America? You know, Grace was um, the one thing that I mostly learned, um, and I won't say mostly, but I'll say one of the things very prevalent for me right now is that Grace would be telling me don't get stuck in old ideas. And so I think that um, recognizing that a lot of the things that we've done to this point haven't worked um, and being willing to uh, strip down to the bare essentials and start from scratch is actually important. Um, and yesterday I learned here at the conference that a caterpillar liquefies before becoming a butterfly. And so I can imagine that's a painful transformation, right? I mean, to, to literally turn into a soup of parts before you can become beautiful and vibrate higher and, 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 and rise above it all. But recognizing that once you get to that point, it becomes, all of this becomes worthwhile. And so I think that Grace will be challenging me to connect to the earth, to listen to young people, um, and to not get stuck in what I think is the solution and to, be, and to understand that the questions are more important than the answers, and so to be questioning. And for people who um, maybe don't know everything they should know about Grace Lee Boggs, this important civil rights activist and labor activist and social justice activist in Detroit. Um, how would you introduce her to them and where could they go for more information? 
Well, I would say that the Box Bogs Center, B O G G S Center dot org, is an important resource to learn more about Grace. Uh, there's a film that Grace Lee, the filmmaker, not of no relation, uh, same name though, uh, made American Revolutionary: The Evolution of Grace Lee Boggs. It's very important. It's on Netflix and PBS, and um, and I think that. Um, have come to Detroit you know we have we have tours we have discussions at the box center on a regular basis and uh and I think that um you can reach out to me you know honeycombthepoet.org or dot com and uh and I'm definitely uh interested in discussing this legacy of work Grace was a very important um figure in helping me shape my development and so and I'm continuing to learn from her she there's, there's seven decades worth of work there that I'm trying to study. So. And what will you be doing at the conference here at Common Bound 2016? Um, I'm actually teaching a workshop, Poetry Not Just an Afterthought in the New Economy, because I, um, as Tony Cade Bambara said, the role of the artist is to make revolution irresistible. So I'm trying to make revolution irresistible. All right, so to all of you irresistible revolutionaries out there, stay tuned. We have more coming in this live stream from Common Bound 2016 with Tawana Petty. I'm Laura Flanders from The Laura Flanders Show. Stay tuned. <laughs>